Thank you, Pastor. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Saints in the Zoom room. So I will be reviewing last week's lesson, which was lesson A of question 18. So let's get right to it. So question 18 asks, wherein consists the sinfulness of that estate whereinto man fell? And the answer, the sinfulness of that estate whereinto man fell consists in the guilt of Adam's first sin, the want of original righteousness, and the corruption of his whole nature, which is commonly called original sin, together with all actual transgressions which proceed from it. And the theme that we chose for question 18 is mankind's sinful human nature. And this theme emphasizes that we are born in sin. And so fundamentally, sin is a part of our very nature. So in answering question 18, our main focus is on the corruption of man's whole nature. And the catechism uses the term total depravity. And depravity is defined as moral corruption, wickedness. And the word depravity is derived from the Latin word pravus, which means crooked, perverse. And the proof scripture for the answer to question 18 is found in Genesis chapter 6 verse 5 and reads, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, from this proof scripture, we can glean certain facts, certain truths about the depravity of mankind. Firstly, the depravity of man is inward. It is deep down within man's nature. And even if some people don't admit to it, if they don't see it, it's there. And God, God sees it. Secondly, in God's view, man's wickedness, man's depravity is great. Men may say that they are not very wicked, but God says their wickedness is great. And thirdly, we note from Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, that mankind's wickedness is continual. It's not at some times, it's not part of the time, it is at all times. And finally, we note that the depravity of man is universal. There is no one who is not evil by nature. I thought it was very apt and picturesque how Last week, Chief Trot likened man's sin and total depravity to the COVID-19 virus. It was a really a great analogy. COVID has impacted every aspect of our lives and it reached every corner of the earth. And similarly, sin has infected every part of man's nature and everything that man does. And just like COVID-19 mutated and it continues to mutate into multiple variants, so sin has multiplied and it has mutated from the original sin. The original sin where Adam disobeyed God and partook of the forbidden fruit 
Than has mutated from that. So now we have we have murder, we have stealing, we have adultery, we have fornication, and there are many perversions that exist in the world today. Sin is pervasive. So last week we next looked at uh, two two different ways in which we can think of a thing as being totally corrupt totally depraved so that we were better able to understand what we mean when we say total. So a thing can be totally corrupt in extent, meaning it is found in every part. It extends from the, the crown of your head right down to the tips of your toenails and the soles of your feet. Or a thing may be totally corrupt in degree, meaning that it is absolute. It's as bad as it can be. It can't get any worse. So let's look at figure 13.1, which gives a pictorial representation of extent and degree. So if you look at the first glass, it contains pure water. And this represents Adam as he was originally created without sin. And then in the middle picture, a drop of poison representing the original sin is added. It mixes with the water and it spreads throughout the entire glass. The whole glass of water is ruined because the poison has corrupted every part of the water. So the whole glass is corrupted in extent. It's found in every part. Now the third glass represents corruption in extent and in degree. So the poison has gotten worse and worse, darker, and darker and blacker and blacker to the point that it has reached the fullest possible degree. It's as bad as it could get. There is not even a trace of goodness, no trace of purity remaining. And this is like the wickedness of Satan, completely, totally corrupt in extent and degree. Now, mankind is totally corrupt in extent, but as long as we are in this world, we are not totally depraved in degree. Evil has not yet gotten as far as it can. And so we then ask, well, why? Why? aren't man worse. And the reason why man is not yet as wicked as he can possibly be, as Satan is, is due to the mercy of God, the mercy of God. But for the mercy of God, sin and corruption would be absolute. And it's doubtful that life on earth would even continue. In his mercy, God put certain things in place to slow down the workings of sin. And so there are a few things that God put in place. And number one, God instilled in man a conscience, that inner voice that speaks to us. This conscience, it doesn't make wicked man good, it doesn't make us good but it does help to restrain the workings of sin to some degree. And we read in Romans chapter two, verse 15, in the New King James Version, who show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness and between themselves, their thoughts accusing or else excusing them. So God instilled conscience in man. 
another thing that God has put in the world to keep sinners from doing wicked things is civil government, civil rule. The Bible tells us that rulers are set in the world by God himself. And we read in Romans 13, verses one to five, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God. And those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of authority? Do what is good and you will have praise from the same. For he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is God's minister, an avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Therefore, you must be subject, not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. Now, a third thing that helps to hold man back from crime is the fear of death. And we read in Hebrews chapter two, verse 15, again, the New King James Version, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. The fear of painful consequences, the fear of death can be a powerful constraint. And finally, men aren't worse they aren't as bad as they could be because there is also the influence of family, education, and society, which helps to slow the workings of sin in the hearts and lives of men. I remember when I first went away to school and I was away from my parents, there were temptations that I did not yield to because I knew that my parents would not approve. I could hear their voices in my head. And also the, the Bible lessons that I learned in Sunday school and in church, they stayed with me and they modified my behavior. So again, God has put certain things in place to slow down the workings of sin. And it is because of this that sinful man can often act in a decent way. But we must never forget, we must never forget that this is not because of anything that's really good in man. Our inherent nature is sinful. So I'll conclude this review by reminding you of question 18. Wherein consists the sinfulness of that estate where into man fell? And the answer, the sinfulness of that estate where into man fell consists in the guilt of Adam's first sin, the want of original righteousness, and the corruption of his whole nature, which is commonly called original sin, together with all actual transgressions which proceed from it. And the theme for question 18, mankind's sinful human nature. Thank you very much. Amen. Oh, sorry. And just, yep, I did say our elder will go right away. Yet I do, while this review is very fresh in our minds and in context of what we are facing, I think it would be prudent for me just looking at that theme to really help bring it home, mankind's simple human nature, that if we don't take on the nature of Jesus Christ, the human nature that we have will go deeper and deeper into sin. Uh, you know, there's three glasses of water, you know, pure water, tainted water, 
and then water taken so far in the opposite direction, you can hardly imagine that it was where it was in the beginning. You see? And this is what sin does. This is what sin does. The reality is to kill someone, to poison someone with drugs, means you are in that third cup. What degree? We don't know. And if your conscience gets seared, you won't even repent. You just move on. You know, we continue to hear about somebody knows, somebody knows this, somebody. What, what, what glass are you in, Bermuda? Who are you? Who are you? Yet this is proof of what happens when we do not train up a child in the way that they should go and take them where they should go. I also wanted to state that somewhere in that second cup, glass, is where we were when we gave our hearts to Jesus Christ. We were not pure water because the goodness that we have and move in is not even our own goodness. It's the goodness of the Lord because our nature is to go the other way. And so do I understand? Should you understand? We understand what's going on in Bermuda? Sure. Yeah. We don't like it. We don't approve of it. We don't want it. But it's what happens when our nature is just not given over to God. We've done this to ourselves, Bermuda. 20 miles, I rebuke anyone that does not understand that where we are today and over the past 20 to 30 years is because we have said we're Bermudians and we can do it all on our own and money became our God. And this is where we have landed. The love of money is the root of all evil. And I'm pretty sure that the ganja, the guns, the gangs, and even the gay is about money. Our society needs God through Jesus Christ, his son. If not, the outcome continues to get darker and we can do nothing. You, you get called for meetings, call for whatever you want until the parents of the baby, the toddler, the children and the preschoolers and maybe primary schoolers, we can go there, start saying, I'm gonna make a change in my life because I want Bermuda to be a better place. We're gonna get worse because outside of light, darkness, it happens. And as Dr. Woods, our elder Dr. Woods spoke, even outside of the atmosphere of her parents, presence of her parents, what was present, was what she was trained in. Sunday school lessons, church lessons, mama daddy lessons. And I'm gonna hit it again as I did last time. You know, God's word says that government are God's ministers. Let's be very clear. I mean, really, really clear. This was written in a time where we just came out of the prophets and the judges and then we had kings and they feared God and they wanted to hear, oh my goodness, what is that prophet gonna say? We have forgot to understand it. See, the rulers are not to be a terror to good works. When we're doing good works, government should be for us. But when we have a government, not just in Bermuda, but all over the world, that for the sake of money, they say, we don't worry about good works, what God will want, this is what would help our economy. Listen to me, Bermuda. Our economy could go sky rocket high, but if families are burying children because of it, something is wrong. And to have governments that do not fear God, what do I mean? Seek God in every decision. God, what would you have Bermuda to do? God, who are the ministers, the pastors? that speak with the heart of the people. We want to seek them out to find out if this next move is right. That's the government that we obey. The government that enacts laws that are against God's word, 
They are a terror to the people. And this is where we are in the year 2022. And government doesn't mean one minister or one premier. We have to think of the whole government. Okay? So we can't say, well, we've got a good MP here. We've got a good MP there. No, the government, it should be on our shoulders, but I pray to God, I believe they have the church on their shoulders because I don't hear much being spoken of. At that time, it's on my heart. And these are the times that I must speak to things because again, the grace of God, there go I. If I had not submit, submitted myself to the Holy Spirit, I might be out there making all sorts of money. So I'm not, I'm not condemning them because I'm, I'm one decision away from being them. And guess what? Here's the awesome news. Drug runner, prostitute, thief, liar, you are one decision one decision away from being a saint and beginning to turn things around in the island of Bermuda. 20 miles, folks, everything that happens, happens quickly because we're tiny. So let's have impact the other way. So I did want to share that again on my heart and clearly taught as we've listened to our Reverend Dr. Woods to give the review. And with that in mind, again, thank you, Dr. Woods. Let's bring on our chief, Elder Esther Trott, Reverend Esther Trott, to give the teaching for tonight. God bless you, Reverend Trott. God bless you, Pastor Seaman. God bless you to those of you in this Zoom room tonight. We are so grateful for the prophet of the land that still hears what God is saying. And tonight, we're doing lesson B. 18b and it says the question we're in consists the sinfulness of that estate we're into men foul and the answer is the sinfulness of that state we're into men foul consists in the guilt of adam's first sin the want of original righteousness and the corruption of his own nature, which is commonly called original sin, together with all actual transgressions which proceed from it. And the theme for this question, mankind's sinful human nature, the theme was mankind's sinful human nature. And tonight we're looking at what sinful man and not do. Remember that our lesson said that because of men's nature, that we are all sinful, but what sinful man cannot do? And our lesson starts off by telling us that men, cannot do anything God considers good or holy or righteous without first being regenerated by the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit does not take a whole of mankind, they cannot do anything that's good or holy. And we say thank God for God regenerating us by his Holy Spirit and continually to regenerate us day by day. And our first scripture tonight is found in Genesis chapter 8, verse 21b. Here beginneth the reading of God's word and our brother Dion is going to read that scripture. I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Thank you. That's allowing us to know that we go back into Genesis and we know that because of man's disobedience, Adam's disobedience, God cursed the ground. 
God told Adam that because of his disobedience, that thorns and thistles and cast him out of the garden. And we know that's when God cursed the earth first for man's sake. But God is even saying now that he's not going to curse it again. But the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. And as I began to think on this, I said, you know, a mother carries a child for nine months. That child is in that womb. That child is eating. That child is drinking. That child is being nourished by that mother. That child is being protected by that mother. However, once that child comes out, and becomes mixed with the rest that are in the world. From their youth, they pick up different things that are not of God and builds their sinful nature within them. No child born is born and saying, I'm going to, and as prevalent as it is today, I'm going to murder somebody. No child is born that way. But because of Adam's original sin that has come down as mankind are born youth, we look and we, we're always saying, what is happening with our youth? But the youth before, which were are the parents and the grandparents, they did not make sure that their sinful nature was regenerated. So what they passed on to the other youth is still sinful. And because of that, God also allowed us to know in Psalms 58 and 3, Dickens Valerian. Psalms 58, 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. That is allowing us to know, this scripture is allowing us to know that once man, kind, are born, they begin to go astray. They begin to turn away. Their affections change. Their feelings change. We're... You can see, and I thought of it in relationship to a child, when a child is born and young, they're very loving and they want hugs and they want kisses. And as they get older, as they become their affection, then is turned away because of the sin they meet with. They may meet up in school with a young man, a young girl that doesn't know God. And because they don't know God, all they do is evil and they think that it's okay. So our children, as they grow, they become, they turn away and they begin to lie as it were. Children don't find it difficult to lie. Many of them don't want to, but they find it very easy. Typical. Did you take that cookie? No. No, I didn't take that cookie. Did you go over so-and-so's house when you were told not to go? No, I didn't go. And you know that's where they're coming from. So they have turned away from their original affections and because of that it's because they've turned away because as they grow there's the sin as it should in figure 13 begins to grow and it goes from one extent to the next and then also in genesis chapter 6 and verse 5 it tells us to get us and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that 
every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Thank you. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great, was great even in their imagination. How many people do we know just sit down and imagine wicked thoughts? They just go through thinking all of the time of how I can do something to get back at so-and-so, how I could do their imagination. And as I grew up as a young girl, I often heard people say that the biggest nation is imagination. Why? Because it's so vast. Everybody's imagination gets worse and worse. And then we look, I thought about it. I looked at our sanctification, confessional. It states about our sinful nature. It talks about how we should be sanctified, but yet because of our wicked nature, Deaconess, it says in our sanctification confessional, but I have tried and know I am incapable of sanctifying myself. I want to sin because my sin nature is still alive. In my flesh is no good thing. Yes. And this is allowing us to know that even as human beings, we see that our nature, as our theme says, is sinful. We want to do good. I believe, I do, that many people sometimes do not want to do the things they do, however, because of their sin nature, which is very much alive. Therefore, in their flesh, they can't do any good thing. Thank God, because this sanctification allows us as human beings, those of us that have accepted Christ to allow our nature to be changed through his sanctification. Next scripture we're going to look at from the English Standard Version is 1 Samuel 16 and 7. Young. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Thank you. We notice that men, it tells us that men always look at the outside. I thought of when Samuel went to David's house, to Jesse's house, to anoint Jesse's son to be king. He looked at the outside. Uh, he looked at the stature. He looked at the uh, build. He looked at the way they uh, presented themselves. And he thought, oh, these would be good kings. And God had to tell him, look, I don't look like you look. I look further than the eyes the natural eye can see. And that's on the inside. He looks at the intent of our hearts. Where are our hearts leading us? Where are our hearts as sinful man? Our hearts continually take us to places. Sometimes people say, I don't even want to go. But because they have the, we have the sinful nature. We go with it. We find it easier to go with the sinful nature that we have. And in it's St. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 25 and 28, it gives us another area of how we look at people, but what we don't see. Well, on to you, scribes and Pharisees, for you may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. 
ye also outwardly appear righteousness unto men, but within ye are full of hypocr hypocrisy and entity. Yes, we looked at how God looked at uh, the men when he was sent Samuel to anoint the king and how they looked at the outside of men. Here in the New Testament, God brings it even home closer. And he said, we look, we appear to be righteous, but yet we're full of hypocrisy and iniquity. And as I thought of that, I thought of a graveyard. When we look at a graveyard, they look very clean. Look at that. Very clean, very white, outstanding. But if you were to open those graves or a grave, when you look on the inside, there's nothing but corruption. There is nothing in there but sin. Corrupted burns, broken down burns. And this is what God is saying, men, women, that this sinful nature that we have is similar to the things, the bodies that are in a graveyard. They're full of dead man's birds. They only look good. And that's what those graves do. They look good on the outside. But the contents, the heart will be man's content. That is where the sinfulness of men calling is. And the next thing we looked at in our lesson was the freedom versus ability. We said way back at the beginning that men in previous lessons that men have a free will. Now, freedom is the absence of external or outward constraint or force. And the ability is the possession of the means or skills to do something. Now, we know that freedom has caused men to become sinful in their nature. Why? Because God had made man a free moral agent. And because of the freedom, they then took it upon themselves, Adam, Eve, to have outstanding and to take away from the instructions. So they didn't even constrain themselves to do what God said. Now the ability you possess, that means you have a mean or a skill to do something. And then we go back and we look, even in our lesson was telling us that take for instance, man, Kind, in many instances, feel that they can fly. They, they look beyond their ability. They feel that they can do whatever. And we can go back to the Wright brothers. When they first decided, they thought it would be a good idea to fly but they went over. And as I looked at it and I looked at it over and over, the Wright brothers had so many things to accomplish and overcome in order to finally be able to fly an aircraft. As human beings, we have so much that we have to overcome but the only way we can overcome it is through the regeneration of God in our lives through the word 
through honestly going to God and letting God know that we are sinful and we don't like what we're feeling. We need the regeneration. And our director, Ryan, is going to do the last few slides. Okay, director Ryan. Yes, yeah, so it says man is always free to do good. No one is forcing him to do evil, but he is not able to do good. Now, I, I kind of liken this a bit. Um, many of you guys know I, I teach a few, a few music students. So my students have, they come equipped, they have keyboards at the house, they have the book that they've been practicing out of, they have headphones so they're not hacking away at home practicing. Nobody's telling them that they can't practice. So they're free to practice. However, they don't have the ability to progress to the next, to the next um, book or the next phase in the book yet. So I actually just finished a student. Her last lesson was tonight, right before I came on. And the last page in the book says, XYZ now has the ability to move on to the next book. She didn't have the ability to do it, obviously, back in September. No, she was free to practice, do what she had to do on her own and be guided through. So now she is able to go on to the next phase of the of her musical education. So thought that was very timely with this with this lesson, freedom versus the ability. Jeremiah 13, 23 says, can the Ethiopian change his skin or can the leopard his spots? Then may you also do good that are accustomed to do evil. I'm just going to sum it up by saying mankind being left to his own nature, he will always incline to, to evil more and more. Thank you, Director Ryan. Well, so we're summing this whole lesson up with the question that if we do not become regenerated, we cannot do good. It's the regenerating of the Holy Spirit that allows us to do good. So question 18 says, we're in consistent sinfulness of the estate we're in to men found. The sinfulness of that state, varying two men found, consists in the guilt of Adam's first sin. So our regeneration has to take place because of Adam's first sin. It was the want of original righteousness and the corruption of his whole nature, which is commonly called original sin together with all actual transgressions which proceed from it. So everything that we as mankind in our nature do know came from Adam. But the only way we can have the nature that we should have is through the regeneration of the Holy Spirit. So let's remember that mankind has a sinful human nature, but because of the regeneration of the Holy Spirit, there are certain things that we cannot do. God bless you. Amen, amen. Let's put our hands together for team out. Esther Trot, amen. And so good to hear those voices chime in. Heart, I will speak to it momentarily. Uh, what I think I will do first is read a couple of the uh, chat comments and then I will speak to it in a moment. Thank you, Reverend Trot, teaching. Our deaconess Rhonda Rollins says, We thank God for his mercy he put in place to save us, the sinful man conscience, civil government, fear of death, influence of family, education, and society. Amen. That's in the review. And then we have, we think we are in the second cup still. See the pure one on one side and the other side, just like the person can see the cup, 
half full or half empty is still so much corruption. Yep, that's why you have to keep on praying. A cup of iniquity, says Reverend Jennifer, is not full yet, Dr. Dave. That's a quote from Dr. And, uh, you know, you got to think of things after the rapture. That's going to be some corruption because there will be no Holy Spirit. So can you imagine? And then our Reverend Stephen Trott, the child look you right in the face and tell the, a lie. And they don't think twice. They just say it. They don't have to think about it. It's natural. That's why parents are needed. If parents need it, hello, they're needed because the child is prone to wonder. Oh, the doc delivers them, the precious, the innocent. By the time the child gets the environment, it's not in the of the hospital. And all of a sudden, the world is open to them. And then Reverend Jennifer saying, is seeing, believing. Well, we know we're people of faith. And so the aspect of seeing is believing. And so the host of the teaching was the presence of the Holy Spirit. The presence of the Holy Spirit. You know, ever since the serpent episode, the battle has been on. On earth, other than heaven, then it's just carried on. There is no, you know, Lucifer was cast the only next lowest estate is how? Earth, how? That's your three. As Christians, we make a choice so that we can be, be a, a, a raptured, a set heaven, that initial estate. But some are not, and they will end up in that third estate, the valley of the earth. Total heat, total fire. Listen, we get impressed by what we can see. How about discerning people by the spirit? Their responses, what they do, how they act. Is that Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit leading them? If it's not, the corruptness of the, who we are still will just continue to increase. You can't stop it from unless the Holy Spirit on board you know I, I cannot reiterate it enough we can moan and we can groan about what's happening in Bermuda but if we don't deal with our something there we can moan groan it's about the home what do we do I, I've got little relatives they didn't know about before the dinner and the parent didn't, didn't when they were with my mama I said you're not saying great I, no, I don't know how to say it. We're saying grace first. What in the world? I'm saying children receive. So we cannot even look at the children and say, well, started somewhere. We need to get back a hold of our lives. And mankind is always apt to sin, right? <laughs> that strains us is the Holy Spirit. So it's not like even when we were born, we were had goodness. It weren't good. We might have even cried good. And we might have gurgled good. So we had to get trained. Right? That's why it used to be back. Parents at least knew. I ain't a Christian, but I tell you what, I'm packing you off to church because you need to learn about Jesus. And the good, buddy. You, you, you got to ask a primary school class. What's the good? Golden rule? They're going to think you're talking about some rap song. Who's that? Um, that goes to show you the extent to where our 20 miles are. How are we going to stop murders? That's, that's our, listen, murder, poisoning people through drugs, stealing family money through gas. It's corrupt. It's evidence of our corrupt nature. And we're, in, we're voting for it. Do you see where this body, this heart will take us? That's why it shouldn't be no Christians talking about, I believe in, in ganja and, and gay and, and, and game and, and, and it's all right if they're in a gang. What? All right. Superintendent is saying, remember Proverbs Sunday school. That's right. Wisdom. 
and I will reiterate from the last class that I edited. It's father to son. I appreciate mothers. I appreciate God bless single mothers who have managed to raise children, especially sons. I give you kudos. I'm telling you though, God's order is that a father should teach his son. You, you can have uh, my child successful and some of you Christian people, your families are not, I said, it's not even about how many is successful. The Bible says a father teaches son. And until we get back there, until living with women and showing their daughters, your mama's just worth me living with. We wonder how the children get trained up. We're doing it to ourselves. I'm just me, I'm gonna deal with it. We are training the children to go astray by celebrating single parents not together, shacking up, and we want a clean society. How that gonna work out? Because now families are struggling. Instead of learning about faith and learning to seed money into the kingdom and watching God, God's word says he'll never see the righteous forsaken. No, we are the believe it or not. And as I've told people through the years, that when they come to my door as they were through messenger, your church got some money or whatever. I say, well, shepherd my church. I'll tell you what. That's why you need to be part of a church because no one at Shekinah Worship Center should be starving. Not according to God's word. Yes. Because I must shepherd God's people. But no, take them away from church. Take them away and depend on government. Families, sometimes that's not working out. All of this is back and say and degree. Just gets worse. All right, folks. Good teaching uh, there, Reverend Trot, and um, there will be an understanding of what. Yeah, let's put our hands together of what's misconception of what looks good. If it doesn't have God in it, it's not good. Thank you, Deaconess Carolyn Lamb for reading, uh, uh, Reverend Ryan for reading and explanation. I mean, I can. I look. I can be home pinging on that piano all I want. But if it don't get to the extent whereby I've learned the lesson, taken the test, I have not improved. I have not been approved. Okay. Also to young Dion. I don't know if he's still on at this hour. Probably is. I just want to send out again. Matter of fact, this is what I thought. And I have to highlight it. Me. Imagine church. If all of our parents said turn to read the scripture on a Wednesday night. We need us to get there because the struggle is real all over the place. Shekinah is not perfect. But imagine that if every team had youth and the parents were like, yes, they're ready. They're only 20. I mean, if, think about it. And up to 830 made an eternity of difference in your life. child. But today, for some reason, we say, oh, they go sleep early and they can't stay up. Training them. That's what we're doing. And so I do again applaud young Dion and his parents and most likely his grandmother, especially, that do it and he wants to do it. So let's continue to do that. Church, for another night of catechism teaching, being sharpened, Beautifully, I agree. Clarity and strength. Amen. Another week of, whereby we've heard the word. Let's continue to represent the kingdom. That's all we are to do. Jesus Christ and the kingdom. Have a word when someone asks a question of you that's Bible-based so that they will know that that's what makes the difference, amen? So we are thankful for the whole, whole time. Um, Shekinah Worship Center, well, I'm slowly getting through finishing the first chapter. I had to do a lot of reading to catch up where my brain is, and then, so I'm gonna go back 
I'm, I'm awake until I feel sleepy. But we're doing good all as well, and it's not freezing. And um, so it's pretty cool. It's all right. It's ex. Well, mind you, you only go out to eat. So it's acceptable. And at Battersby, out of Battersby, God bless you as you continue to cover for me, along with the essence of our chief, out of Trot. God bless you all. And, well, you know what I'm saying. Blessings abound.